Hi everyone, welcome to Papa's Workshop. As you might expect, a couple days before Christmas, the shop is really humming. And today, I want to show you this pin. This is a fountain pen that has a magnetic catch on it that holds the cap in. I have never done this Vortex Supreme pen like this before, but I think it absolutely turned out beautiful. And I want to show you how I did this fountain pen today. Okay, today I'm making the Vertex Supreme fountain pen kit. And I have never made a kit like this with this type of fountain pen before. So the first thing as I normally do, I want to check and make sure that I have everything that I need. And on this one, it requires a 10 and a half millimeter drill bit and also a 12 and a half millimeter drill bit. Now, I didn't have those, so I went ahead and ordered those from Penn State Industries. And this has a special tip for it. And I want to be able to show you these tips. These tips are actually designed for the acrylic pens. And this is the first time that I've used bits like that. So I want to be able to see how it drills through the acrylic. The pen blank that I'm going to be using is this one right here for this fountain pen. It's a very beautiful pen blank, and I think it's going to turn into a gorgeous pen. The other thing that I needed to verify is that I had the correct bushing set. So this is the number for the bushing set, and I want to make sure that that matches what I have here. And I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but the bushing set is listed right here on the instructions, and I can match the number and it is the same set, so I'm good with that as well. So now that I know that I have everything that I need to be able to make this pen, that I'm going to go ahead and set up and cut the blank and get these brass tubes epoxied inside of the blank. Now I use the table saw to cut these blanks to length. And I know a lot of people use the band saw, but I find that I can get a cleaner, straighter cut using the table saw. And I've cut these blanks just a little bit long. Now it's very important to realize that this Brad's tubing, this was the one for the 12 and a half millimeter. And so that is the small blank. So I got to make sure that I drill the correct size hole with the right size bit. So this is my 10 and a half millimeter drill bit. And that is going to work for the brass tubing for this one. And that is going to be the longer tube. Now to be able to mark the center, I'm just going to go ahead and put this right into that slot. I have my other triangle right here. And with that in place, I can go ahead and mark it. Rotate this around. Put it again right where I needed to have it. Mark it. Oops, it moved a little bit. And I like to do that a couple more times just to make sure that I have it exactly where I want it. And you can see where that intersects for the center. And I'll do the same thing for this one. Now one of these videos that I do next year, I'm going to go ahead and make one of these tools. That'll be a whole lot easier. But for now, this is what I'm using. So that gets the center point. Then I want to verify it by putting two more lines across here. And that will verify the center point. Now at the drill press, I'm using my 12 and a half millimeter drill bit to drill this hole. 
And this is the way that I've always done it in the past, and this did not work. As I started to drill it, it did slip. It's also very difficult to be able to get it to line up, and it was a complete failure. The only good thing about it is, even though it was slightly off-center, it did not go deep enough to be able to ruin this blank. So now it's on to a new method that I've never done before. Using the drill press was a complete failure. This was not working at all. So I went ahead and set it up on the lathe. And we're going to try again to be able to cut this while I still have the blank in good shape. So I went ahead and have this set up now. And we're going to go ahead and drill it this way. And again, I have never drilled a blank this way. So this is going to be a first also. So I have this on the lowest setting, and we're going to try to drill this through. Now you can see how the bit is vibrating, and that's because it's a little bit off-center. Can't do anything about that, but I am going to go ahead and drill it all the way through, moving very slowly and taking my time. And I'm going to back it out and clear the bit, and then go back in again. The good thing I want to check, these bits are not hot, and that's the other thing that I wanted to look at. So it's not melting the resin. So it's all the way through. We're backing this out now. Okay, I've got the bit completely removed now, and I'm going to go ahead and remove the blank from the, um, from the lathe. Now this seems to be a complete success and I really like this method and I think I'm going to start using it more and more. But the important thing here is that it was a little bit off center and, the, and you can see that in the video and that was from the drill press, not the lathe. And that's why the bit was vibrating just a little bit as I was drilling through. Now it's time to go ahead and set up the second cut. And I'm going to go ahead and change the drill bit first and set this drill bit aside. So I must say, using this type of a bit was very successful. So hats off to Penn State Industries. And I don't know if they designed this or they just added it to their collection. But it's a lot better than a uh, brad tip bit to be able to cut these acrylic blanks. So I'm going to go ahead and set this one up now. And one of the things that you want to do, you want to tighten this so that it's even from multiple sides. Alright, so that is set. Now I want to go ahead and get the blank installed. And again, we'll tighten it from both sides so that it's even. There we go. So that's now tight. Now I'm going to go ahead and drill this very slow as I did the first time. But the big thing that you notice here is that the drill bit is completely stable. There is no vibration at all. So it's drilling perfectly in the center. Now I wanted to feel the shavings and to see if they were hot. And they're not. They're just slightly warm and that's good. I have about a half an inch to go because I actually put a mark right there so I know where the end is. So I'm through now. Go a little bit further to be able to clear. And then we're going to back this out. There we go. Now to be able to show you this, that looked really, really good. I think I'm going to start drilling more of the blanks this way. Because this turned out real good. So I'm going to go ahead and get the brass tube ready and glue this in. Now I want to get these blanks ready. And one of the most important things to do, even though these are roughed up, 
it's important to be able to go ahead and take the sandpaper and rough this up more. Because in all the years that I have done this, one time I did have a blank that turned loose because I did not do this step and that brass tubing came out. I never want that to happen again. So from time to time, yes, I do have failures and I want to be able to show you and be able to have you learn from my mistakes as well. So by being able to rough up this brass tube, it makes it where the epoxy has something else to be able to grip to. Now that looks real good. I'm going to go ahead and mix up the epoxy and we're going to get these blanks taken care of. Now I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. Just because this is the five minute epoxy, I go ahead and let this usually sit over at night or at least let it sit for a good 10-12 hours before actually using it. Go ahead and put a good heavy coat on this tubing and I want to be able to get good coverage all the way around. And we'll go ahead and slip that in. Now I want to push it all the way through and I want to push it out the other end because just by putting this blink in a lot of the epoxy comes off of it and I want to make sure there's a really good coat of epoxy on all surfaces of this blank. Now I've got the blank set up on the lathe now with the proper bushings and I'm just taking this very slow on a very slow speed to begin with. To remember that first blank, the small one, is actually off center and I need to go ahead and get it turned without having the speed too high. Now then, once that's done and it's now round, I can increase the speed and be able to go ahead and turn this. Again, slow, deliberate passes is what I want to be able to do. And I think it's really turning out pretty. Okay, with the turning complete, it's now time to start the polishing. And I'm using the polishing pads, and they go from the 600 grit all the way up to 12,000. And this is a wet sanding process. And I take this one pad at a time, using the water to be able to uh, do the sanding and in between I'll go ahead and sand horizontally to be able to clear off any of the minor scratches that are there before switching to the next grit. The final polish that I use is actually headlight polish and it works extremely well. This first one will remove all of the little small tiny scratches that may be there and it cleans and polishes really great. From there, you can see this is just looking gorgeous. And once that is done and the polish is done, then I go ahead and put on the headlight protectant. And I'll put a couple of coats of this on to be able to protect the finish. And the last thing that I do is I'll take a buffing cloth and just go ahead and buff the pen blank and make it just really shine. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now as I do with all of my pen kits, I actually lay out the components the way that they are installed into the pen. And this one actually is a very easy, straightforward pen kit to be able to assemble. And what I have to be able to do, these little small couplers will just fit right inside of here on each end of this kit. Once that's done, the other components will just screw into place. 
Now the other thing is, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, one of the things that I really like about Penn State pens, and I don't know if all pen kits have this, but this has a very small little flange here that makes it easy to be able to slide that right in and really get it positioned where you want it before you actually start assembling it. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this one now. I'm going to set that right there and just very slowly bring that up and be able to press it in. And that fits in just perfect. And then see this part will just screw in. But I don't want to screw that in quite yet because I want to get the other end of this bushing in. That's going to slip right in here. And I want to make sure it goes straight in. And that just slides in. That is perfect. Now then, the next thing that I'll do is just go ahead and screw this part in. Now since this is a fountain pen, it has these cartridges. Now, I'm not going to do that yet, but this cartridge has this little uh, tip here that actually will slide into this fountain pen and it will puncture that center part and allow the ink to flow down into the tip. But I'm going to let the owner of the pen do this. I'm not going to do this part. So there is the main body of the pen finished. I'm going to go ahead and bring that up into the camera. That is just really, really beautiful. And I like the, both the silver and the gold color on that with the pen blank that they had chosen for this. Very, very pretty. Now I'm going to go ahead and assemble this last part. And I think I'm going to put that right here. I'll slide that around and get that right there in the center. And I'm going to need to add one block back. And then we're going to go ahead and start sliding this part in. Yeah, that looks real good. That is beautiful. And now we'll go ahead and put this part in. This is the last piece. Okay, I have just a little scrap piece of cardboard because I don't want to scratch this metal. So I'm going to go ahead and put that right where it needs to be. Slip that cardboard in place. And then we'll be able to push this right into its home position. There we go. And that way it will not damage this. That has a magnetic tip on the end of it, which I like. You turn it around and it snaps in. And I think that has turned out absolutely gorgeous. Hi everyone. Thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.